हेलो एवरीवन हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप दैट ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग अमेजिंगली ग्रेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेलकम टू दिस बैच सो इन टुडे सेशन बेसिकली दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ नेक्सस बैच फर्स्ट मैथमेटिक्स क्लास ऑफ दिस बैच सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी टेल यू व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन टुडे सेशन एंड देन आई एम ऑल्सो गोइंग टू शेयर माई प्लान माई विजन विद ऑल ऑफ यू that what is my vision with this batch where do i want to take this batch whether this batch is for cbse only or this batch is for iit je all of your doubts all of your questions will be answered in this session and if any question is unanswered you can definitely use the comment section and post your question and i will definitely answer that question in the next session okay but first of all what we are going to study in today's session in this session basically as you can see the name of the chapter is basic mathematics there are three lectures which are assigned to this chapter basic mathematics and this is the first lecture of, of this chapter okay what we are going to study in today's lecture in today's lecture we are going to be learning about quadratic equations yes sir we have already learned about quadratic equation i know that all of you already know about quadratic equation okay so just a little bit of basic i will be telling you because for those of you who have forgotten the concept of 10th classes at least i will give you a quick recap about quadratic equations and i will get more creative with this chapter quadratic equation basically more creative question will be asked to you okay you will see the questions are really amazing what does j e examination do they take a simple concept a simple concept of like everybody knows how to solve a quadratic equation right they will give you a quadratic equation in terms of exponential or they will give you an equation which does not look like a quadratic but we can convert that equation into quadratic those type of equations are known as equations reducible to quadratic equations okay so that we are going to study in today's session also i have lot more things in store for you like exponentials okay and then basic and important identities that is asked in je examination okay so that we are going to cover in today's lecture in the next lecture we are going to be learning about inequalities and then in the next one we are going to be learning about logarithm okay so three lectures are assigned to this chapter now whether this batch is for cbsc or only for boards or are we also targeting competitive examination like je mains and je advance of course we are also targeting the competitive examination of je mains and je advance because this is the right way to learn many of students who come into the 11th class okay they think that we should only focus on the boards part okay many have this strategy that for 11th and 12th we are only going to focus on the boards and then we are going to take a drop and then we are going to prepare for the you know je mains je advance examination so according to me this approach is very very wrong okay what i want you to do is just go with this batch okay we are going to teach you at je je level also boards level boards will be covered when you will be studying for je examination okay boards are just a subset of je examination boards are just a subset so if you are good in je examination you will automatically do good in boards examination so we are going to take both the you know the je and the boards so this is my vision for this particular batch okay so let's get started without any further delay my name is kundan mankad and i will be your mathematics teacher in this batch okay let's get started now so quadratic equations and equations reducible to quadratic okay so all of you have learned that what does quadratic equation looks like quadratic equation looks like this ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 this is the general you know look of a quadratic equation how do we solve a quadratic equation we solve it by middle term splitting right generally we you know follow that approach middle term splitting okay and we also have a direct formula to find the roots of this quadratic equation basically what are roots i hope everybody knows that roots are those values of x which satisfies this quadratic equation those are roots okay like suppose if you do by middle term splitting example one suppose there is a equation that x square minus 5x plus 4 equal to 0 we are going to solve this quadratic equation by middle term splitting method how do we use that we multiply a and c a is the coefficient of x square 
okay coefficient of x square what is the coefficient of x square over here the coefficient of x square is 1 and what is the constant term c c is 4 so we take the product of coefficient of x square and c so 1 and 4 their product is 4 only okay so we are going to split this middle term into two parts such that such that their sum is their their multiplication is 4 and their sum is minus 5 we are going to split it like this okay i know it's very easy right so i'm just going to go quick into this part so yes this is how we are going to split it minus 5x will be right minus 5x will be splitted into minus 4x minus x because as you can see their product minus 4 and minus 1 their product is plus 4 and product of a and c is also plus 4 so this is how we split that and then we take factors common we get two factors x minus 4 into x minus 1 is equal to 0 so the values of x which satisfies this equation are 1 and 4 you know x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 4 satisfies this equation basically if i put x as 1 in this equation it will satisfy it you know the left hand side will also become 0 if i put x as 1 right you can check that out and if i put x as 4 the left hand side again becomes 0 okay uh, and if the product is negative like in this case like x square minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 like here you can see that the product of 1 and minus 6 right its product is minus 6 so i'm going to split that split this minus x into two parts right how do i split it i will split it into minus 3x and plus 2x minus x will be splitted into minus 3x plus 2x and then i'm going to factorize this thing right like x square minus 3x plus 2x will be minus x only right minus 3x plus 2x will be minus x only and minus 3 and plus 2 their multiplication is minus 6 so this is how we deal with using middle term splitting method all of you have studied this method in the 10th class so i won't go much into detail just a quick recap so that all of you knows right its factor will be x minus 3 into x plus 2 is equal to 0 these are going to be the factor of this equation x minus 3 into x plus 2 is equal to 0 so basically x is equal to 3 will satisfy this equation if you put x as 3 you can see that this equation is satisfied and x is equal to minus 2 will also satisfy this equation because that x is equal to minus 2 this becomes 0 so all of you knows that so this is middle term splitting method and there is also a direct formula for that and the direct formula goes like this that x is equal to minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a this is the direct value of x suppose if the middle term splitting method doesn't work very well if this method doesn't work very well we are going to be using this so what is here b square minus 4ac this is known as discriminant okay d is equal to b square minus 4ac this is known as discriminant the part inside the under root this part which is inside the under root this is known as discriminant okay a lot depends upon discriminant Anna? a lot depends upon discriminant okay, suppose if discriminant is positive if the discriminant is positive we can say that there are roots if discriminant is positive there are two distinct roots right everybody knows that if discriminant greater than zero two distinct roots if discriminant equal to zero there are identical roots both roots will be identical okay so two identical roots or we can say two equal roots but if discriminant is less than zero there are no real roots okay why there are no real roots all of us knows what are real numbers what is real number line everybody knows about that right there is also imaginary numbers which are which you are going to study later on what are imaginary numbers basically in real number we does not allow we do not allow negative inside under root like under root of minus 4 is not allowed right root of minus 4 root of minus 4 this is not a real number we are not allowing this in a real number so what is this number this number is an imaginary number okay under root of minus one we call it as iota we write it as iota this is an imaginary number so under root of minus four is nothing but two iota okay 
under root of 4 into under root of minus 1 that is 2 iota so don't worry about this part just i'm giving you a quick you know glance about what is imaginary numbers so if there is negative inside the under root that number is imaginary number so here if discriminant becomes negative if b square minus 4ac this discriminant becomes negative then we have an imaginary number over here so basically the root becomes an imaginary numbers okay if root is an imaginary number okay then there are no real roots if discriminant is negative i hope all of you knows about this particular part okay i hope all of you knows about this formula we have used this formula a lot of times in our 10th classes okay write in the comment section sir yes we are okay good with this part okay now let's move ahead so you can easily solve this type of quadratic equation x square plus 4x minus 45 so basically 1 into minus 45 so minus 45 so basically i want to split this plus 4x into two parts okay plus 4x into two parts such that their multiplication is minus 45 so i'm going to split this into 9x minus 5x okay so this is how we are going to be splitting it there are going to be two factors if you take x common from this so x into x plus 9 minus 5 times x plus 9 is equal to 0 so x minus 5 multiplied by x plus 9 is equal to 0 there are two roots x is equal to 5 and minus 9 okay generally with practice if you are good with quadratic equation if you have done a lot of practice i will directly reach from this step to this step okay we are not going to perform these two steps okay skip try to skip try to skip these steps just for competitive examination point of view if you want to make your calculation a lot faster because we are going to be solving lots of quadratic equation in our class 11 there are going to be lots of questions in will in which we will be solving lots of quadratic equation so if you are going to follow these two step every single time it is going to take a lot of time so instead of that if we can directly reach from here to here and you will be able to directly reach here by some practice so if you are not good with quadratic equation if you are not good with solving middle term splitting so you should practice on that okay so uh how do we reach directly over here so that i know that plus 9 into minus 5 9 into minus 5 that is minus 45 and here i am going to get plus 9x minus 5x plus 9x minus 5x is going to give us plus 4x so that's how we reach from here to here and just you need a little bit more practice on it okay so practice middle term splitting method that's your one of the homework so if you are not good with middle term splitting method practice on it okay you can easily solve this question like 12 into 2 24 24 right 12 into 2 24 so i am going to break this plus 11x into two parts 8x plus 3x because 12 into 2 is 24 8 threes are 24 and the sum of 8 and 3 is 11 so as simple as that okay so you can complete this question now after that what are the roots what are the integral roots of this equation so if you take 2x common from here 2x times x plus 4 plus 3 times x plus 4 is equal to 0 there are two roots uh, 2x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 4 is equal to 0 so the roots are so if 2x plus 3 will become 0 when x is equal to minus 3 by 2 and x plus 4 becomes 0 when x is minus 4 so these are the two roots of this equation okay x is equal to minus 3 by 2 and x is equal to minus 4 they are asking us about the integral solution so this is the integral root minus 4 is the integral root not a big deal and now in this type of equation middle term splitting will not work so here we need to use the direct formula to solve a quadratic equation okay that is x is equal to x is equal to minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a what is a a is the coefficient of x square a is 
What is b? b is the coefficient of x, which is minus 3. What is c? c is the constant term, which is minus 1. Put all of these values over here. Minus of b. b is minus 3. Minus of minus 3 will be plus 3. Plus minus under root of b square, that will be 9. Minus 4 into a. And what c? c is minus 1 divided by 2a. 2 times a, the value for a is 1. So we get 3 plus minus root of 13 divided by 2. So these are the roots. 3 plus minus root of 13 divided by 2. Not a big deal. So just a little bit of basic. As I told you, we are going to start from very, very basic. Now, as I told you, there are some equation which does not look like a quadratic equation. Okay, but we can convert it into quadratic equation and we can solve them. So these type of equations are known as equations reducible. Reducible means convertible. Reducible. What does reducible means? It means convertible. So those equations which we can convert into quadratic are known as equation reducible to quadratic equation. Okay, let's have a look at some equation like this equation x raised to the power 4 minus 5x square plus 4 is equal to 0. If I ask you to solve this particular equation, x raised to the power 4 minus 5x square plus 4 is equal to 0. Now this is not a quadratic equation, right? This is a biquadratic equation. Okay, we call this type of equation as biquadratic equation. Okay, so how do we solve this? We can convert this biquadratic equation into the quadratic. And how do we do that? So if I simply take just a little bit of observation, you need to apply that if I take x square as t, if I take x square as t, let there is some other variable t, I take x square as t, then definitely x raised to the power 4 will be equal to t square. Yes, if x square is t, if I do the squaring here, so x raised to the power 4 will be equal to t square. So I'm going to replace this x raised to the power 4 as t square. I'm going to replace this x square as t. Yeah. So now we have this quadratic equation in terms of t. We can easily solve this quadratic equation in terms of t by middle term splitting method. We are going to get two factors from it t minus 4 multiplied by t minus 1 is equal to 0. If you factorize this, we are going to get these two factors, right? So what are the values of t? We are getting the values of t as 1 and 4. But this is not the answer. This is not the solution of this given equation, x raised to the power 4 minus 5x square plus 4. Because this is the value for t. Now we need to get the value for x square. Now we have considered t as x square, correct? right? We have considered t is equal to x square. So we are getting two values of x square, 1 and 4. If x square is 1, x will be equal to plus minus 1. x will be equal to plus minus 1 if x square is equal to 1. If x square is equal to 4, x will be equal to plus minus 2. So we are getting four values of x. We are getting four roots from this equation. We are getting four roots from this equation which are plus minus one and plus minus two okay i hope all of you understand this part that if x square is four x is equal to plus minus two everybody get this right because yes the square of plus two is also four the square of minus two is also four so there are two values of x which satisfies this equation or we can bring four to the left hand side we can take two factors yeah okay now, suppose if the equation is written like this, that x raised to the power 4 plus 5x square plus 4 is equal to 0. I ask you to solve this equation. Find the values of x. Solve for x. Basically, find the values of x which satisfies this equation, Okay, where x is a real number. Where x belongs to real number. You are going to see this symbol a lot. This symbol is known as belongs and this capital R is known as set of real numbers. Okay, So where x is a real number we want to solve this equation. So how do we solve it? Simply we are going to take x square as t. If I put x square as t in this equation 
we are going to get this equation like this that t square plus 5t plus 4 is equal to 0 right we have converted this equation into a quadratic one okay now this is a quadratic equation how do we solve it middle term splitting method i am going to break this 5t into two parts 4t and t okay i am going to break this 5t into two parts 4t and t i am going to skip those steps and directly going to write the factors i hope you have arrived to the factors these are going to be the factors of this equation right can you see this that t plus 4 and to multiplied by t plus 1 is equal to 0 these are the two factors so what are the values of t we are getting over here we are getting the values of t as minus 4 and minus 1 right these are the two values t is equal to minus 4 because if t plus 4 is 0 basically if the product of two factors right if the product of two factors is 0 then one of them right we are so if t plus 4 becomes 0 t is equal to minus 4 if t plus 1 is equal to 0 t is equal to minus 1 so we are getting two values of t minus 4 and minus 1 now what are the values of x okay what we have considered we have considered t as x square so we are getting two values of x square one of that is minus 4 another one of them is minus 1 so is there any real value of x we can arrive to no because if square of any real number square of any real number okay listen to it carefully very important line i'm going to say square of any real number is always positive you take any number guys any number let's say minus 2 what is the square of minus 2 is this a negative no it's a positive number plus 4 what is the square of plus 2 that is also plus 4 so basically square of any real number is going to be positive so here if we say that x is a real number then how does its square becomes a negative it's not possible if x square is equal to minus 4 x is not a real number x will be an imaginary number okay the square of imaginary number is negative don't worry about imaginary numbers we are going to be learning about imaginary numbers in the chapter complex number I'm, I'm going to teach all about imaginary numbers in a great great detail but here we are not concerned about that so just keep your questions okay for a while till we reach till we reach a complex number so if you have any questions about imaginary numbers if you have curiosity about imaginary numbers just hold that till we reach to the complex number chapter and there all of your questions will be answered in great great detail okay but for now what you have to remember that if x square is equal to minus 4 no solution if x square is equal to minus 1 there is no solution so here i am going to write no real roots no real roots basically there isn't any real number which satisfies this equation now let's understand it by observation that how does this equation has no roots how does there is no value of x which satisfies this equation so if we think about it in a logical way so logically if we say that see x square is always positive x raised to the power 4 is always positive square of any real number is always positive power 4 of every any real number is always positive so we can see that these are three positive terms this term is a positive term this term is a positive term this term is also a positive term how is it possible that sum of three positive terms becomes equal to zero it's not possible sum of three positive terms can never be equal to zero so that is why there is no real solution so our observation also tells us the same solution right that there are no real numbers satisfying this equation okay cool 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 now let's move ahead suppose if we solve this equation x raised to the power 4 minus 8 x square plus 15 is equal to 0 again we are going to take x square as equal to t so x raised to the power 4 becomes t square minus 8 times t okay plus 15 is equal to 0 this is the equation we have now okay the factors of 15 into 1 think about the factors of 15 into 1 so what are the factors of 15 5 and 3 are the factors of 15 so yes we can simply break this 
minus 8t into two parts minus 5t minus 3t. We are going to break this into these two parts. So after breaking it into these two parts, we are going to get get two factors and the factors are going to be t minus 5 into t minus 3 is equal to 0, right? So what are the values of t? 5 and 3 and t is what? t is x square, okay? t is x square. So we are getting two values of x square. x square is 5, x square is 3. Yes, both of them are possible. If x square is equal to 5, x will be equal to plus minus root 5 x will be equal to plus minus root 5. If x square is equal to 3, x will be equal to plus minus under root of 3. Okay. If x square is equal to 3, x will be equal to plus minus root of 3. Okay. So these are the four solutions we are getting. So option B is the right answer for this question. Cool, cool, cool. Now, if there is a like this type of equation, x raised to the power 6 minus 9x cubed plus 8 equal to 0, how are we going to solve it? So this does not look like a quadratic equation, but we can convert it into a quadratic and then we can solve it. So basically, these are basics of mathematics. We are going to start from very, very basic so that those students who were not good in maths till 10th class, they can also understand it and prepare for JE examination. So very basic we are starting from, okay? Everybody cool with that? We are going to take to a very high level, but for now, for the first few lectures, we are going to go with very, very basic, okay? But in those basics also, I'm go also going to give you some tough questions. I'm also going to give you some challenges because that are also necessary, right? Challenges are also important because if everything is so simple, you are not getting challenged at all, you won't be that much interested, right? So you will be getting some challenges. Don't worry about that. You will be getting some DPPs, right? Now, this question. x raised to the power 6 minus 9x cubed plus 8 equal to 0. How are we going to solve it? Simply take x cube as t this time. So if you take x cube as t, this becomes minus 90 plus 8. And what does x raised to the power 6 becomes? If x cube is t, x raised to the power 6 will be x raised to the power 6 will be t square. If x cube is t, x raised to the power 6 will be t square. Yes, simple. See, yeah, you can simply do the squaring over here and you can understand that part that if I do the squaring, do the squaring over here on both sides. So if x cube is t, if you do the squaring, the square of x cube will be x raised to the power 6. The square of t will be t square. So if x cube is t, x raised to the power 6 will be t square. Now this is a q, this is a quadratic equation, right? We can simply solve this quadratic equation. There are going to be two factors. The factors are t minus 8 into t minus 1 is equal to 0. Two values of t we are getting from here, 1 and 8. And we have considered t as x cube. t is what? x cube. So x cube is either equal to 1 or x cube is e either equal to 8, right? Now, what's the value for x? Okay. If the cube of a number is 1, that number is also 1 because 1 cube is 1, right? If the cube of a number is 8, whose cube is 8? 2 cube is 8, right? 2 cube is 8. So the values of x we are getting from here, x is equal to x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. These are the values of x we are getting. Some of the students do a very silly and very basic, basic mistake. And what is that mistake? What they do? Okay, it's a very silly mistake. Some of them say that x is equal to plus minus 2 or x is equal to plus minus 1. I hope you understand that this is not true here. Okay, the cube of minus 1 is minus 1 only. The cube of minus 2, what is the cube of minus 2? The cube of minus 2 will be minus 8, right? Minus 2 cube minus 2 cube basically you are multiplying minus 2 3 times correct this will be equal to what minus 8 right so here x will not be equal to minus 2 x will be equal to plus 2 only because 2 cube is 8 minus 2 cube is yes cool 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 let's move ahead now solve this equation this equation is one of the equation reducible to quadratic. 
yeah this is a quadratic equation we can convert this into a quadratic equation but right now we are not able to see how do we convert this into quadratic how do we solve this equation so before solving this question i am going to teach you some very basic and very important laws of exponent laws of exponential all of you must have studied this but it's very important so the first law which you must know okay it's not just about knowing it's about applying in the correct situation okay that is also important and you will be able to apply in the correct situation if you understand it thoroughly if you understand each and everything deeply then you will be able to apply in the situation so the first law is a raised to the power m multiplied by a raised to the power n will be equal to a raised to the power m plus n yes everybody have seen this now let's understand this law okay what does it say it says that a number raised to the power some other number like see here this is known as base and this is known as exponent suppose if i write 2 raised to the power 5 what is the base over here the base is 2 and what is the exponent exponent is 5 what does 2 raised to the power 5 means it means that i have multiplied 2 5 times 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by yeah that's what it means right everybody knows this yeah so a raised to the power m into a raised to the power n here the powers will be added up but we can only add the powers if the base is same otherwise we can't add the powers suppose if i multiplied if i multiply 2 raised to the power 5 multiplied by 2 raised to the power 7 suppose if i multiply these two so what will be this equal to this will be equal to 2 raised to the power 5 plus 7 2 raised to the power 12 this will be equal to this okay i hope you understand this because see here 2 is written 5 times 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 have right here 2 is written 7 times so we are multiplying 2 how many times in total we are multiplying 2 12 times so we can directly write it as 2 raised to the power 12 okay very basic and very important law okay but we can't write like this suppose there is 2 raised to the power 5 into 3 raised to the power 4 we can't write it you know 6 raised to the power 20 don't do these type of calculation these are like i have seen students doing these calculations so i am telling you i hope all of you understand that this is not true or 6 raised to the power anything basically if the base is same then only we can add the powers so understand the laws very very clearly okay now suppose we have a raised to the power m divided by a raised to the power n so this time we are subtracting the power so this will be equal to a raised to the power m minus n for an example there is 2 raised to the power 7 divided by 2 raised to the power 5 okay there are seven twos in the multiplication in the numerator there are five twos in the multiplication in the denominator you can subtract the power you can simply write it as 2 raised to the power 7 minus 5 which is 2 raised to the power 2 okay simple 1 upon a raised to the power m or n whatever is equal to a raised to the power minus n okay i hope all of you understand this that 1 upon 2 raised to the power 5 we can write it as 2 raised to the power minus 5 in the numerator we can write it as 2 raised to the power 7 into 2 raised to the power minus 5 right this is 2 raised to the power 7 multiplied by 2 raised to the power minus 5 and now if we add the powers 7 minus 5 that will be 2 add these two numbers 7 and minus 5 that will be 2 so 1 upon a raised to the power n is equal to a raised to the power minus n okay now suppose we have a raised to the power n into b raised to the power n if the powers are same bases are different right there is number a there is number b the powers are same a raised to the power n multiplied by b raised to the power n that will be ab whole power n that will be ab whole power n suppose it is written that 5 raised to the power 3 5 raised to the power 3 into 7 raised to the power 3 so here the powers are same so we can write it as 5 into 7 whole raised to the power 3 right 5 raised to the power 3 into 7 raised to the power 3 is equal to 5 into 7 whole raised to the power 3 which is basically 35 raised to the power 3 we can write it like this so this is the law which we are talking about ab whole raised to the power n correct everyone 
now the next the next law which is very very important every law is very important i hope all of you understand these laws very clearly okay suppose we have a raised to the power m whole raised to the power n so this is equal to what a raised to the power m whole raised to the power n this is equal to a raised to the power mn here the powers will get multiplied okay suppose i have uh, 2 raised to the power 3 whole raised to the power 5 what does it mean it means that i have written this number 2 raised to the power 3 how many times five times basically this means that 2 raised to the power 3 into 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 2 raised to the power 3 this is what it means that i have written basically 2 raised to the power 3 and also we are you know 2 raised to the power 3 five times so i have multiplied 2 raised to the power 3 five times so here we if we add the powers if i add all these these powers this will be equal to 15 or we can directly say that here powers will get multiplied so this will be equal to 2 raised to the power 15 only simple okay now but there is a difference between see there is a difference between let's say 2 raised to the power 3 whole raised to the power 5 okay and 2 raised to the power 3 raised to the power 5 these two things are different things many of the students get confused between these two things they see many of them understand that these two are the same things they are not same the first one is equal to 2 raised to the power 15 correct what does second one mean second one means that there is 2 raised to the power in the power of 2 there is 3 raised to the power 5 Three raised to the power five is on the power of two. Here we have two raised to the power three, whole raised to the power five. Basically, here we are writing two raised to the power three five times, which you have understood will come equal to two raised to the power fifteen. But here, what we mean that we have on the power of two. What is the power of two? The power of two is three raised to the power five. Okay. What is three raised to the power five? Okay. Everybody knows that three raised to the power four is eighty one, right? Three raised to the power four, three square is nine. Nine into nine is eighty one. So if three raised to the power four is eighty one, three raised to the power five, if I multiply by three again, it will be equal to two forty three. Okay. So basically, this is two raised to the power two forty three, a very very big number, which we can't even calculate. Okay. This is two raised to the power two forty three. So understand the difference. Okay. See the difference. You know, these two are different different things. Okay. Now let me get back to the laws of exponential. So we have understood about this law. Okay. The next one. See. In the first law. A raised to the power m into A raised to the power n. We can write it like this. Generally, we use from here to here. Generally, we go like suppose if A raised to the power m plus n is written, we can write it as A raised to the power m into A raised to the power n. That is more important. Okay. I will tell you later on. So now the sixth law. The sixth law is any number raised to the power zero is one. any number raised to the power 0 is 1 but that number should not be 0 okay here a is not equal to 0 here a is not equal to 0 any number raised to the power 0 it can be any number but it should not be equal to 0 okay like if i ask you what is 1 raised to the power 0 that is 1 what is 2 raised to the power 0 that is 1 3 raised to the power 0 that is 1 what is 1 by 2 raised to the power 0 that is also 1 any number you take any number but chalo Minus three raised to the power zero, one. Any number raised to the power zero is equal to one. Okay, but that number should not be equal to zero, because zero raised to the power zero is indeterminate form. Okay, that is not defined. Zero raised to the power zero is not defined. It is indeterminate form. We are going to be learning about this form later on in the chapter limits. 
okay we'll be learning a lot about mathematics so just be interested in the subject okay there are lots of questions you might have in the start when you come into the 11th class you have lots of questions what is imaginary numbers what is zero raised to the power zero okay do you have lots of questions what is zero by zero so just keep your questions it will get cleared go with the flow go with what we are teaching you over here and you are going to do great okay so 1 by 2 raised to the power zero is 1 pi raised to the power zero is 1 pi is an irrational number everybody knows this its power zero is 1 basically any number raised to the power zero okay i am just deleting all these examples you can just write it okay now okay one of the question that i always get asked about that sir should we make our own notes or should we just download the notes so everyone you will be getting the notes after the class you will be getting the entire notes after the class but still i would recommend that all of you write make your own notes okay and just first of all understand then pause the video then write down all of these things which you have understood because i have clearly seen that those students who make their own notes perform much much better they have much better retention than those students who are not making their own notes because if you understand something and then you are writing that thing so it's very hard to forget after that basically <laughs> yeah so seventh seventh is basically zero raised to the power any number is zero only if you raise zero to any power it is zero only where this power should not be equal to where this power should not be equal to zero basically okay zero raised to the power 1 zero raised to the power 2 zero raised to the power any number is equal to zero only okay and i hope all of you understand about these symbols under root under root of x basically this means x raised to the power 1 by 2 under root of x is basically x raised to the power 1 by 2 everybody understand this there is also this symbol okay this is known as x raised to the power 1 by a this is x raised to the power 1 by a suppose if the value of a is 3 this is x raised to the power 1 by 3 if this is 5 x raised to the power 1 by 5 we never write it over here as 2 okay this is not a symbol we don't write it as 2 over here it is basically understood that under root of x is x raised to the power 1 by 2 so where a is a okay a belongs to natural number okay or you can say a greater than 2 a can be 3 4 5 and so on okay a can be 3 4 5 and so on okay now so these are some basic symbols which you need to know basic symbols okay so under root of x that means x raised to the power 1 by 2 okay if we have a number over here this means x raised to the power 1 by a suppose if we have 3 over here this means x raised to the power 1 by 3 okay these are basic laws of exponential now we will be using these laws okay first of all in this basic equation let's try these laws in this basic equation so find the value of x if in this equation we need to solve for x okay very simple question so how do we do that so in the left hand side you can see that powers are same in the left hand side correct bases are different here the base is 2 here the base is 3 so are you able to see what law what law we can apply over here okay bases are different but the power is same okay suppose if i write 2 raised to the power 5 into 3 raised to the power 5 bases are different the power is same what do we write this we can write this as 2 into 3 whole raised to the power 5 correct so in the similar way 2 raised to the power this into 3 raised to the power 6 and a 3 raised to the power this we can write it as 2 into 3 which is 6 whole raised to the power x square minus 6 okay 2 multiplied by 3 whole raised to the power this thing now in the right hand side so first of all 6 raised to the power x minus 1 whole raised to the power 4 the powers will get multiplied we can write it as 6 raised to the power 4x minus 4 in the denominator we have 6 raised to the power 5 okay 6 raised to the power 4x minus 4 in the denominator we have 6 raised to the power 5 so again the base is same right 
the base is 6 the powers are different we can subtract the powers right so we can write this as 6 raised to the power 4x minus 4 minus 5 right this minus this this minus this 4x minus 4 minus 5 okay in the left hand side we have 6 raised to the power x square minus 6 so now on both the sides see in the right hand side in the right hand side we have 6 raised to the power 4x minus 9 in the left hand side we have 6 raised to the power x square minus 6 so bases are same we just need to simply compare the powers base is same both the sides so simply equate the powers x square minus 6 and 4x minus 9 simply equate these two okay so here we have x square minus 6 is equal to 4x minus 9 this is a quadratic equation we can solve it for the value of x which is x square minus 4x is equal to 0 see 4x minus 9 we have okay so if minus 9 comes to this side minus plus 9 minus 6 that will be plus 3 is equal to 0 this is the equation we are getting correct so here we have two factors x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 1 as 0 so we are getting two values of x 1 and 3 i hope everybody agrees with this part correct okay then i hope all is clear till now so now let's move forward to that question which we were talking about this one okay 2 raised to the power 2x plus 1 and then we have minus 33 times 2 raised to the power x minus 1 plus 4 is equal to 0 this is the equation we need to solve so first of all all of you understand that 2 raised to the power 2x plus 1 the first term we can write it as 2 raised to the power 2x into 2 raised to the power 1 correct we can write it like this 2 raised to the power 2x into 2 raised to the power 1 like a raised to the power m plus n can be written as a raised to the power m multiplied by a raised to the power n right generally we use it to go from here to here we can write a raised to the power m plus n as a raised to the power m into a raised to the power n in the similar way 2 raised to the power 2x plus 1 can be written as 2 raised to the power 2x into 2 raised to the power 1 okay minus 33 times in the similar way how are you going to write 2 raised to the power x minus 1 so i hope you understood that 2 raised to the power x minus 1 can be written as 2 raised to the power x upon 2 raised to the power 1 right this will be basically 2 raised to the power x minus 1 plus 4 is equal to 0 now this is the equation we have okay here the variable is here we have 2 raised to the power x here we have 2 raised to the power 2x right okay let me write it again plus 4 is equal to 0 so what are the variable basically we need to solve for x correct so we have this term observe this term 2 raised to the power x everything else is constant observe this term 2 raised to the power 2x so our approach in this question we are going to take 2 raised to the power x as t if I consider this term as t, this term will be t square. This term will be t square. So this becomes a quadratic in terms of t. Now you must be asking this question, sir, how this term becomes t square? See, it's very simple. See, if I consider 2 raised to the power x as t, right? Then if I do the squaring on both sides, basically what is 2 raised to the power 2x? 2 raised to the power 2x is basically square of 2 raised to the power x, right? 2 raised to the power 2x is 2 raised to the power x whole square. I have considered 2 raised to the power x as t, so basically this is equal to t square only, correct? So that's what I said, that if I consider this as t, this will be t square. Now our equation is, we have 2 times t square, 2t square, minus 33 by 2 times t, right 33 by 2 times t plus 4 is equal to 0 so this is the equation we have in terms of t we can easily solve this equation right we take the lcm so we have 4 t square minus 33 t plus 8 is equal to 0 the product of 8 and 4 is 30 32 right so i'm going to break this minus 33 into two parts 
फोर टी स्क्वायर माइनस थर्टी टू टी माइनस टी प्लस एट इज इक्वल टू जीरो लेट्स मेक टू फैक्टर्स सो फ्रॉम दीज टू टर्म्स आई कैन टेक फोर टी कॉमन सो वी हैव फोर टी टाइम्स टी माइनस एट गाइज आई वॉन्ट यू टू डू द कैलकुलेशन बाई योर सेल्फ ओके एंड फ्रॉम माइनस टी प्लस एट आई एम गोइंग टू टेक माइनस वन कॉमन सो माइनस वन टाइम्स टी माइनस एट इक्वल टू जीरो so basically we are getting two factors over here what are those two factors those two factors are uh, t minus 8 t minus 8 is one of the factor another factor is 4t minus 1 so product of these two factors is equal to 0 so we are getting two values of t from this factor we are getting t as equal to 8 from this factor we are getting t as 1 by 4 right so t is equal to 8 or 1 by 4 but this is not the final answer okay we are very close to the answer but this is not the final answer what will be the final answer the value of x what is t t is 2 raised to the power x right i have considered 2 raised to the power x as t so if i equate it to 2 raised to the power x now what are the values of x so if 2 raised to the power x is equal to 8 what power of 2 is equal to 8 Right, two raised to the power three is equal to eight. Correct. So from here, I am getting the value of x as three. Okay, two raised to the power three is equal to eight. Any other value of x? If two raised to the power x is equal to one by four, then x will be equal to minus two. Two raised to the power minus two is equal to one by four. Or you can write one by four as two raised to the power minus two. Then equate. 2 raised to the power minus 2 is equal to 2 raised to the power x, so x will be equal to minus 2. So I hope you understand how to deal with these type of equation. One more similar equation which I am going to give you as a homework, and I want you to comment in the comment section what's the answer for this question, what's the values of x that satisfies this equation. Okay, I want your answer in the comment section. Everyone, please try this question. Please, please, please try this question. okay you will love with this question okay now and if you get the answer and even if you don't get the answer please write in the comment section that sir we tried we tried a lot but we were not able to solve this question you can write in the comment section so that i know that at least you guys tried at least you guys are motivated so that's all we need just keep trying keep trying sometimes you will be able to solve the question sometimes you will not be able to solve the question okay it will happen in this journey but whatever happens let me know okay let's be connected throughout this journey okay so if you are not able to solve this question write in the comment section if you are able to solve this question and got your answer then also write in the comment section okay i always always read the comments so i will definitely going to read your comments okay now let's move ahead some basic identities which you should already know that a plus b whole square a square plus b square plus 2ab a minus b whole square everybody knows this as well a square plus b square minus 2ab a square minus b square there are two factors for that a plus b into a minus b you should be able to factorize these kinds of like if i ask you how to factorize this 4x square minus 1 can you make the two factors for this one everybody is able to make two factors one is 2x minus 1 another is 2x plus 1 basically this is written as 2x square 2x whole square minus 1 square these are the two factors for that yes okay another example like 2x square minus 3y square suppose i want to make the make factors for this one a square minus b square okay so it will be root 2 times x minus root 3 times y multiplied by root 2 times x plus root 3 times y okay we can write it like this right basically this is written as square of root 2x right this is root 2x square this is root 3 times y square so a square minus b square again similar factors okay let's move ahead a plus b whole cube i hope everybody knows this this is equal to a cube plus b cube plus 3ab multiplied by a plus b 3ab multiplied by a plus b 
सपोज इफ यू हैव ए माइनस बी होल क्यूब सो यू जस्ट नीड टू रिमेंबर द फर्स्ट आइडेंटिटी द सेकेंड आइडेंटिटी यू डोंट इवन नीड टू रिमेंबर द सेकेंड आइडेंटिटी सिंपली रिप्लेस बी विद माइनस बी इफ यू रिप्लेस बी विद माइनस बी आई विल गेट हियर माइनस बी क्यूब राइट द क्यूब ऑफ माइनस बी इज माइनस बी क्यूब here i will be getting minus 3ab into a minus b so these two are very important identities simply replace b with minus b you will derive the second identity as well third one a cube plus b cube is equal to a plus b into a square plus b square minus ab and a cube minus b cube has one of the factor as a minus b so just remember this factor the rest of the factor you will automatically you know recall so a cube plus b cube one of the factor is a plus b another factor is a square plus b square minus ab a cube minus b cube one of the factors is a minus b another factor is a square plus b square plus ab okay uh important thing uh, i hope uh, you also know these identities like a cube plus 1 a cube plus 1 one, one of the factor will be a plus 1 another factor a square minus a plus 1 okay basically this is same as a cube plus b cube here the value of b is 1 that's it okay so this is also a very very important identity okay we should be able to factorize this a cube plus 1 its factors are a plus 1 into a square minus a plus 1 and the factors of a cube minus 1 one of the factor is a minus 1 another factor a square plus a plus 1 so i hope all of you remember these factorization ठीक है, डोंट वरी अबाउट द प्रूफ पार्ट ऑफ इट दैट सर हाउ वॉट द प्रूफ बिहाइंड दिस प्रूफ इज वेरी सिंपल यू जस्ट नीड टू एक्सपैंड इट ओके जस्ट सपोज इफ आई वॉन्ट टू प्रूव दिस ए प्लस बी होल क्यूब हाउ डू आई प्रूव आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड द थॉट प्रोसेस बिहाइंड प्रूविंग इट ए प्लस बी होल क्यूब यू जस्ट नीड टू मल्टीप्लाई थ्री फैक्टर ए प्लस बी इंटू ए प्लस बी इंटू ए प्लस बी इफ यू सिंपली मल्टीप्लाई दैट यू विल गेट दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड दीज आर सम बेसिक आइडेंटिटीज विच यू हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन योर क्लास टेंथ राइट so no need to worry now this is a very important factorization which you need to know very very important factorization from the je point of view particularly talking about je point of view also asked in boards examination not particularly this but it is used in question it is used in big questions okay so x raised to the power 4 plus x square plus 1 you need to factorize this what are the factors for this one okay i am already telling you it has two factors remember okay remember that x raised to the power 4 plus x square plus 1 has two factor one of the factor is x square minus x plus 1 another factor is x square plus x plus 1 R these are the two factors okay remember now how do we prove it so its proof is also important how do i factorize this okay so what i am going to do i am going to make a perfect square over here so to make that perfect square my first step okay step 1 is add x square you know add and subtract x square theek okay? hai add x square and subtract x square in it so if you add x square in it we are going to get x raised to the power 4 plus 2x square plus 1 minus x square this that's my critical step okay what i have done over here i have added x square so if you add x square this x square will become 2x square right basically this is written the same thing now this is written the same thing x raised to the power 4 plus 2x square minus x square that will be x square basically this is these two expression this expression and this expression are completely same all of you understands this part right so i have added x square i have subtracted x square why have i done that because now this becomes a perfect square this becomes a perfect square so i have done that to make it a perfect square that's all So now this becomes a perfect square this becomes the square of this becomes the square of x square plus 1 right x square plus 1 whole square will be this expression minus we have x square now we have that format of a square minus b square 
a square minus b square there will be two factor one of the factor will be a minus b where a is this portion right x square plus one this is a x is b so we have a square minus b square one of the factors will be a minus b another factor will be a plus b okay so this is a plus b a plus b and the other factor is a minus b okay so x square plus one minus x so these are the two factors for it which is the same thing i've written that x square you can also arrange is arrange this thing like this x square plus x plus one into x square minus x plus one okay correct so remember this factorization that the factors of x raised to the power 4 plus x square plus 1 its factors are x square minus x plus 1 another factor is x square plus x plus 1 okay very very important you need to remember this part and also remember the idea behind it a plus b plus c whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus c square plus 2 times a b plus b c plus c a okay cool now very important to observation that we can write a square plus b square either in terms of this or in terms of this okay basically they are saying that we can write a square plus b square as a plus b whole square minus 2ab either you can write it in this way or you can write it in this way a minus b whole square plus 2ab Okay, both works according to the situation we are going to adapt that how we are going to write it. So either we can make a perfect square of a plus b, right? As you can see, both of the sides are same. I don't need to prove this part. You can easily prove it. You can directly observe it that if you just expand a plus b whole square in the right hand side, what are we going to get? In the right hand side, we get a square plus b square plus we will get a term of 2ab. And here I have minus 2ab. So the term of 2ab will get cancelled out. And the right hand side is also a square plus b square now. In the similar way, a, here, a minus b whole square. If you expand a minus b whole square, you are going to get a square plus b square minus 2ab. So to cancel out that term of minus 2ab, I have added plus 2ab. So again, you can see that the left hand side and right hand side are same. So these are the two scenarios. Either we can write a square plus b square as a plus b whole square minus 2ab or we can write a square plus b square as a minus b whole square plus 2ab. Okay. Very important. Okay. This part is also very important. Basically, this is nothing. I hope you are not getting confused over here because this is nothing. This is just a plus b whole square formula only. See, that is why mathematics is such an interesting subject because everything is visible. Everything is right in front of your eyes. You just have to observe it. Okay. I have seen students struggling at these places. I've seen in my, you know, teaching career of eight years, I've seen students struggling at these portions also. Okay. And I, I think some of you might struggle at this portion. So that is why I'm telling you just observe, just observe put your observation in use just write if you are just going to write you will be able to understand that this is nothing but a plus b whole square formula only a plus b whole square formula only here we need to apply a minus b whole square formula only okay he, if we have plus over here we have minus if we have minus we have plus so these are the basic observation observation matters a lot if you want to crack J, if you want to crack J advance, J means observation is going to matter a lot. Very basic question. If X plus 1 by X is equal to 3, then what is the value for X square plus 1 by X square? So you can do the squaring over here. So if you do the squaring on both sides, we are going to get X plus 1 by X is equal to 3. This is the given information. This is the given equation. We want to find the value for x square plus 1 by x square. So simply by squaring on both sides, just do this thing, squaring on both sides. So in the left hand side, we are going to get x square plus 1 by x square plus 2 times x into 1 by x. In the right hand side, we are going to get a 9. a square plus b square plus 2 into a into b. Now this term is very beautiful. Because x and 1 by x will get cancelled out. This term is simply 2 only. 
here x and 1 by x will get cancelled out this term is simply 2 only if you bring that 2 to, to the right hand side we are going to get 9 minus 2 which will be equal to 7 so we have x square plus 1 by x square is equal to 7 okay that's the value for x square plus 1 by x square or another way of solving this question another way of solving this question you can directly write x square plus 1 by x square as I can directly write x square plus 1 by x square as because I have the value of x plus 1 by x right so I'm going to write this as x plus 1 by x whole square minus 2 a b this is how I'm going to write this is direct directly using the identity okay I need to find the value for x square plus 1 by x square in the question they have given us the value for x plus 1 by x so I'm going to write this as x plus 1 by x whole square minus 2 a b a b is equal to 1 the product of x and 1 by x is equal to 1 basically here I have used that identity only which identity this one that a square plus b square is equal to a plus b whole square minus 2 a b this is the identity I have used in this place okay do you understand these basic manipulations now what's the value for x plus 1 by x the value for x plus 1 by x is 3 so if you just simply put the value for x plus 1 by x as 3 over here we get 3 square 3 square is 9 9 minus 2 is 7 direct okay so it's very very important everybody we can basically also remember this thing that we can write x square plus 1 by x square in two ways both of the ways are very very important we can write it in two ways one of the way is in terms of perfect square of x plus 1 by x so we can write this as x plus 1 by x whole square minus minus 2 yes both the sides are same if you simply expand this thing if you simply expand this thing you will be able to observe that the right hand side will become x square plus 1 by x square plus 2 and subtracting from minus 2 the term of 2 will get cancelled out right hand side is x square plus 1 by x square only or I can write x square plus 1 by x square as x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2 okay this is also one of the way of writing this thing we can write this as x minus 1 by x whole square because I hope all of you understands this okay so this is very very important because it is used in like bigger equation okay like in big big question it is used suppose this is the question the value of x square plus 1 by x square is already given they have given you the value for x square plus 1 by x square as 11 and they are asking you the value for x minus 1 by x okay so here x square plus 1 by x square is given as 11 now you can write x square plus 1 by x square as x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2 right I hope you understand this part that x square plus 1 by x square can be written as x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2 okay basically this entire expression is nothing but x square plus 1 by x square only right that x square plus 1 by x square minus 2 into x into 1 by x so there will be a term of minus 2 and here we have plus 2 that will get cancelled out this entire expression is x square plus 1 by x square only okay so I've written it in like this now we will transfer this 2 to the right hand side we will get 11 minus 2 as 9 in the right hand side so x minus 1 by x whole square is equal to 9 so whose square is equal to 9 plus 3 or minus 3 so the value for x minus 1 by x is equal to plus minus 3 it can be either plus 3 or it can be minus 3 okay not a big deal yeah very easy very basic part very easy part but important you should be able to play with these part now I have told you those basics to prepare you for this question very amazing question and I'm going to give you a similar question like this for your homework 
okay but first of all let's try this one we have the term of x square see let me again write the equation S first of all we have the term of x square then what do we have 1 by x square then what do we have minus 5x minus 5 by x so if we take minus 5 common from it so we get minus 5 times x plus 1 by x Th if we take minus 5 common from these two terms I am going to get this one everybody clear plus 8 is equal to 0 okay this is the type of equation we have basically I hope all of you understand what do we need to do in this question yeah what are we doing we are finding the value of x okay that's what we are doing here that we are looking forward to the value of x what's the value for x in this equation now the same type of equation has been asked in J mains, J advance in previous years so many times. So it's very very important type of equation and you should be able to understand how do we deal with this and it's very very easy. So this is equation reducible to quadratic. We need to convert it in terms of quadratic because we know that if we make a beautiful quadratic equation out of this not so beautiful equation <laughs> right out of this ugly equation if we make a beautiful quadratic equation we can solve that quadratic equation and get the answer right but how do we do that see everybody I'm going to play with this term x plus 1 by x I'm going to take this term as t and I want to make this entire equation in terms of t if I take x plus 1 by x as t if I take x plus 1 by x as t how do I write this in terms of t how do I write x square plus 1 by x square in terms of t? That's my question. Okay. So everybody knows that you can write x square plus 1 by x square as, as x plus 1 by x whole square minus 2. I want to write x square plus 1 by x square in terms of x plus 1 by x. Okay. So you can write this as x plus 1 by x whole square minus 2. Also, you might have this question, sir, why are we not writing it in terms of x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2? Why are we not writing it like that? So I hope you understand that here we have x plus 1 by x. I am taking x plus 1 by x as t. So I am going to convert this in terms of, you know, x plus 1 by x. So I can write x square plus 1 by x square as x plus 1 by x whole square minus 2. So what is x plus 1 by x? I am taking this thing as t, right? So this is what now? t square minus 2. This is what now? t square minus 2. So now we have this equation as t square minus 2 minus 5t plus 8 equal to 0. Very beautiful quadratic equation we have generated now. See, this portion x square plus 1 by x square, I have written this as t square minus 2. I have taken x plus 1 by x as t. So we have this as t square minus 2 minus 5 times t plus 8 is equal to 0. Right everyone? Very easy. Okay. Now this is the equation we have. We can easily solve this equation like this. We have this equation as t square minus 5t plus 6 is equal to 0. There are two factors for this quadratic equation. One of the factor is t minus 2. Another factor is t minus 3 is equal to 0. t minus 2 into t minus 3 is equal to 0. There are two roots. Either t is equal to 2 or t is equal to 3. t is equal to 2 or 3, right? These are the two values of t we are getting. But the question is not solved qu completely yet. This is the value for t. We are looking for the value of x. So what is t? t is basically x plus 1 by x. t is basically x plus 1 by x. So now we get two values of x plus 1 by x. One of the value is 2, another value is 3. Now we need to further solve it to get the value for x. Okay. So here we are getting two values of x plus 1 by x that x plus 1 by x is either equal to 2 or x plus 1 by x is equal to 3. Right everyone? Okay. So again let me summarize the question till now. See here if I take minus 5 common I get this term. 
I am going to take this term x plus 1 by x term as t. And I know that I can write x square plus 1 by x square in terms of x plus 1 by x. And how do I write that? x square plus 1 by x square can be written as x plus 1 by x whole square minus 2. Basically t square minus 2. So I've written this as t square minus 2. Then I have minus 5t plus 8 equal to 0. I have solved this quadratic equation, got the values of t, two values of t, 2 or 3. So we have now two equations, either x plus 1 by x is equal to 2 or x plus 1 by x is equal to 3. Right? So x plus 1 by x 2 or x plus 1 by x 3. Now we are further going to solve this to get the values of x. Okay. So if I take LCM, LCM over here, I'm going to I'm going to get x square plus 1 is equal to 2x. Here if I take LCM, I'm going to get x square plus 1 is equal to 3x, right? Basically multiply by x or take the LCM, we are going to get x square plus 1 in the numerator. In the denominator we have x, which I have multiplied in the right hand side, okay? You understand this calculation? So x square minus 2x plus 1 equal to 0 or x square minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0. So from here, what is the value of x do we get? This is a complete square. This is x minus 1 whole square. So if x minus 1 whole square is equal to 0, then there is only one value of x which we are getting, which is x is equal to 1. Okay, from this equation, we are also going to get more solution from this equation. Or from this equation, we are going to get Okay, so this equation will not be able to, we are not going to, you know, do the middle term splitting and solve it. Instead of that, what we are going to do, apply the Dharacharya formula. So x is equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac, 9 minus 4 divided by 2. See the value for b square will be 9. Okay. So the values of x we are getting over here, x is equal to 3 plus minus root 5 whole divided by 2. These are the two values of x that we get from. Okay. So how many total solutions? If I ask you how many total solutions are there, there are three solutions. One of the solution is x is equal to 1. And the other two solutions are 3 plus root 5 by 2 and 3 minus root 5 by 2. So there are three solutions for this equation. This is the way of solving these type of equation. Very, very important. You can put some stars over it. Okay. You should be able to solve these type of equation. I'm going to give you a homework question on it. So everyone, please, please, please try this homework question. This is a very similar type of equation. The only difference is, let me give you a hint over here. If you take minus 5 common from these two terms now, we are going to get this equation as x square plus 1 by x square minus 5 times x minus 1 by x plus 4 is equal to 0. This is how we are going to get this equation. If you take minus 5 common from this. So now in this one, I'm going to take x minus 1 by x as t. So how do I write this in terms of t? If I take this as t, how do I write this in terms of t? That's my question. So you can write this as x minus 1 by x whole square. x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2. Right? x square plus 1 by x square is equal to x minus 1 by x whole square plus 2. So if you take this as t, this is t square plus 2. So now we have a very beautiful equation in terms of t, which is t square plus 2 minus 5t plus 4 is equal to 0, which can be further written as t square minus 5t plus 6 is equal to 0. Okay. This is the equation we are getting, right? t square minus 5t plus 6 is equal to 0. So from this equation, first of all, we get the value of t. Okay, t is what? x minus 1 by x. So from there, we will get the values of x. So that's what they are asking. What are the values of x satisfying this equation? Okay, comment the answer for this question in the comment section. Let me know that are you able to solve this equation? Okay, and of course you are. Okay. So this is the homework question for all of you. I've given you hint or almost I have solved the question.
just give a little bit more thought to this you will be able to reach to the final answer now two important identities two you know two twins you can say you know basically these two twin identity you know these two are what twins okay very important identities for j point of view okay these identities will be used later on in determinants when you will be study determinants uh, there are many good question that are made in determinants by the help of this basic identity it is used in trigonometric equation i can give a trigonometric equation in which the knowledge of this identity will be used so the thing is the basic mathematics is very very important these are these will be used later on basically everything i teach you in these classes are important okay so just you know thoroughly study everything that i teach you now we have a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca okay so the first identity this is the first identity this is the second one okay both identities are very important the first identity says that a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca is equal to half times is equal to half times a minus b whole square plus b minus c whole square plus c minus a whole square basically this entire expression is the sum of three perfect squares is equal to half of the sum of three perfect squares what are those three perfect squares a minus b whole square plus b minus c whole square plus c minus a whole square okay very important again i am repeating it this entire expression is half of the sum of three perfect squares what are these perfect squares a minus b b minus c c minus a whole squares okay very very important now how do we prove it it's very easy to prove either we can go go from left hand side to right hand side or right hand side to left hand side it will be easier to go from right hand side to left hand side it will be very very easy right if you simply expand these three perfect squares you will get the left hand side expression only okay if you simply expand these three perfect square you are going to get the left hand side expression only so i'm not going to waste much time in proving these identities because it is very easy to prove you can prove it by yourself suppose if you expand a minus b whole square this is what basically half times if you expand a minus b whole square you are going to get a square plus b square minus 2ab if you expand b minus c whole square b square plus c square minus 2bc plus c square plus a square minus 2ac add all of them we are getting a square two times here here we have a square here we have a square add these two we get 2a square here we get 2b square then we get 2c square then we have minus 2ab minus 2bc minus 2ca just divide by this 2 oh. if you divide by this 2 you will get the left hand side a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca so very very important identity you need to remember this one okay now it's twin brother or sister whatever it is we say that a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 abc we have two factors for it one of the factor is a plus b plus c and what's the another factor what's the another factor have you seen it somewhere yes the first one this is the another factor a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 abc has two factors one of the factor is a plus b plus c another factor is a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca how to prove this one simply just multiply these two simply if you multiply these two expression and it is going to take some time to multiply it just multiply a with these entire thing b c you know you do that so if you multiply these two you will get this one but do we need to do that right now no do you need to do that later on no you just simply need to remember this one okay identities are something which is always true what do what is identity like a plus b whole square that is an identity a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab we don't prove it 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 is basically <laughs> you just simply multiply a plus b into a plus b if you simply multiply it you are going to get a square plus b square plus 2ab right you are not proving that you simply remember that yeah it's visible 
it's right in front of your eyes that yes yeah, simply if you multiply these two things this is equal to that in the similar way this is also very much visible if you simply multiply these two factors you are going to get this it's also very much visible but it is going to take some time to you know practice this entire thing so that's it you just need to remember these two identity okay now what's the result that we need you know the important result these are the observations these are the identities the result on that is if a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca is given equal to 0 if this is equal to 0 then a will be equal to b and that will be equal to c not equal to 0 okay let me write that there is a printing mistake over here see everyone the thing is that whenever in the question if it is given that a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca is equal to 0 if it is given okay then then a is equal to b is equal to c it is zero only if a b c are same a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca will become equal to zero only if only if a equal to b equal to c now the question is why okay now the question is why see it's very much you know self explanatory that's we know okay we know that we know that a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca is equal to what this is equal to half times a minus b whole square sum of three perfect squares right sum of three per perfect squares we know this we know that a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca is equal to half times a minus b whole square plus b minus c plus whole square plus c minus a whole square if this is equal to 0 if this left hand side is given as 0 if this is given that this is equal to 0 then of course this thing will also be equal to 0 correct this thing will also be equal to 0 and sum of three perfect squares can only be zero if all the three perfect squares are zero right their sum can be equal to zero if a minus b is zero b minus c is zero c minus a is zero right so it implies that a minus b b minus c c minus a all of them has to be zero 0 square plus 0 square plus 0 square will be equal to 0 right if any one of them is non zero the sum will be non zero if suppose a minus b equal to minus 2 so it will become plus 4 right this will also be some positive this will also be some positive thing so sum of three positive things cannot be equal to 0 sum of three perfect square can only be zero remember very very important very basic but very important that sum of three perfect squares can be equal to 0 only if all the three are equal to 0 here all the three has to be 0 a minus b has to be 0 b minus c c minus a has to be 0 so if a minus b equal to 0 then a will be equal to b if b minus c equal to 0 then b equal to c c minus a equal to 0 then c is equal to a so here we get a is equal to b is equal to c okay so this is a very very important identity which you need to remember everyone okay let me put that into a box okay very very important identity okay if a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca is zero then a equal to b equal to c and we have seen their proof that why does it happen okay now another if it is given if it is given that a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 abc is equal to 0 if if it is given 
that aq plus bq plus cq minus 3 abc is equal to 0 then we can say that either then either a is equal to b is equal to c or a plus b plus c is equal to 0 okay very very important again if aq plus bq plus cq minus 3 abc if it is given as 0 then either a b c all of them are going to be equal or a plus b plus c is equal to 0 okay all of them are going to be equal or they are going to be 0 c now let's prove this part as well why okay that's the question again so we are going to answer this question so we know that we know that aq plus bq there are two factors for this right aq plus bq plus c cube minus 3 abc there are two factors for this one of the factor is a plus b plus c another factor is a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus c f these are the two factors of aq plus bq plus cq minus 3 abc these are the two factors we have seen this we know this identity okay i hope you remember this identity if you don't right now remember this entire identity very very important okay now see the thing guys if this part is equal to zero if this is given equal to zero then of course the right hand side is also zero right hand side is the product of two things the product of two things is equal to zero if either this thing is zero or this thing is zero right the product of two things will be equal to zero the if this is zero or this one is zero so either a plus b plus c is zero see i have written it either this factor is zero or if this factor is zero and we have just seen that if this factor is zero this can be equal to zero only if a b c are equal okay just go back to the previous page we have seen that a square plus b square plus c square minus a b minus b c minus c a will be zero only if a b c all of them are equal correct then only it will be equal to zero okay if all of them are equal okay you can take an example suppose 2 2 2 right uh, 2 square plus 2 square plus 2 square minus 2 into 2 minus 2 into 2 minus 2 into 2 will be equal to zero or you can take 3 3 3 and put over here you can see that they will be zero okay so and we have also seen their exhaustive proof this is how we go this is how we prove this thing okay everyone clear so far so here we have aq plus bq plus cq minus 3 abc equal to zero then either a b c are going to be equal or a plus b plus c is equal to zero okay for an example Suppose if I give you a question like this that x cube plus 2 y cube plus 1 minus 6 x y is equal to 0. Okay, I have given you this that if this thing is equal to 0 and x not equal to this is 8 y cube and x not equal to 2y and if x not equal to 2y then find the value for find the value of x plus 2y what is the value for x plus 2y so this is a very simple example on this one see here i can compare it with aq plus bq plus cq minus 3abc here i can compare it with that right what is the value for it you know compare with compare with a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 a b c is equal to 0 now what's the value for a over here a is basically x b is basically 2y c is basically 1 right this is written as x cube plus 2y cube plus 1 cube right a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 into a a is x b is 2y this is written like this 
ए क्यू प्लस बी क्यू प्लस सी क्यू माइनस थ्री इंटू ए इंटू बी इंटू सी सी इज वन ओनली इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो इफ दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो वी हैव टू कंक्लूजन दैट ईदर ए प्लस बी प्लस सी इज जीरो राइट देर आर टू कंक्लूजन फ्रॉम हियर दैट ईदर एक्स प्लस टू वाई प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो ईदर ए प्लस बी प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो और a is equal to b is equal to c or x is equal to 2y is equal to 1 right a b c will be equal either a equal to b equal to c or a plus b plus c will be equal to 0 and it is already given in the equation that x not equal to 2y it is already given in the equation so we are going to reject this case we are going to reject this case so this is the case we are going to follow are we getting the value of x plus 2y from this case yes right so hence x plus 2y is equal to what minus 1 so our answer for this question is minus 1 now i can simply just uh, do a little bit changes in the question suppose if i do this change suppose same question everything is same just a little bit of change i'm applying in the question let me know the answer for this one i hope you can uh, arrive at the answer suppose if i do this x cube plus 8y cube minus 1 plus 6xy is equal to 0 same question x cube plus 8y cube here i have minus 1 plus 6xy is equal to 0 can you solve this equation so yes this time right i'm just giving you the hint hint is that here this is x cube plus 2y cube plus minus 1 cube i can write this minus as plus minus 1 cube a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3 abc minus 3 multiplied by x into 2y into minus 1 this is written in this format only This is again the same format. A cube plus B cube plus C cube. Now, what is the value for C here? The value of C is minus one. A cube plus B cube plus C cube minus three A B C. What is this term? See here, minus three minus one will get multiplied and give us give it plus six, right? So it is plus six x y only, right? Plus six x y only. So I'm going to write this expression in this format. So now we can see our standard identity. So now we have the answer, right? So either a equal to b equal to c, okay. Either a equal to b equal to c. Either x is equal to two y is equal to minus one, or a plus b plus c is zero. X plus two y plus minus one is equal to zero. So either a equal to b equal to c, or a plus b plus c is equal to zero. So this portion they have already said that x not equal to two y. So let's reject this part. and let's accept this part so the value for x plus 2y is equal to what x plus 2y is equal to 1 that's the value for this right let's do some last few questions and then we are going to wrap up this session okay find the relations between p q and r in the following case the first case what is the relation between p q and r Here we have p square plus q square plus r square minus p q minus q r minus r p is equal to zero. So this is the same format: a square plus b square plus c square minus a b minus b c minus c a equal to zero. So if that is equal to zero, we say that a equal to b equal to c. So in the first one, in the first one we say p equal to q is equal to r. Now what do we say in the second one? B part. Have a look at the B part. in the b part we have c p square plus we have 3q square right 9q square can be written as 3q square plus we have 2r square so again a square plus b square plus c square is this minus ab yes this is minus bc this is minus ca so the second one can be written as p square plus 3q square plus 2r square A square plus b square plus c square minus ab, where a is p, b is 3q, you eh, know. So minus p into 3q minus bc 3q into 2r minus ca, ca will be p 
पी इन टू टू आर आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग दिस एंटायर एक्सप्रेशन इन दिस फॉर्मेट इन द फॉर्मेट ऑफ ए स्क्वायर प्लस बी स्क्वायर प्लस सी स्क्वायर यस माइनस ए बी दिस विल बी माइनस थ्री पी क्यू दिस विल बी माइनस सिक्स क्यू आर दिस विल बी माइनस टू आर पी Correct. I've written in this format. Now we can clearly see that A will be B equal to B. That will be equal to C. So from here, in the third one, we have P is equal to three Q is equal to two R. A is equal to B is equal to C. This is the relation between P Q R. That's what they are asking. Find the relation between P Q and R. So P is equal to three Q is equal to two R in this one. Now what about the third one? What about the C part? so the c part is also very simple in the c part see we have 9p square plus q square plus 100 r square and the right hand if we bring all these terms to the left hand side we are going to get it like this that 3p square 3p square which is 9p square plus q square plus 10r square Minus minus three p q plus ten q r plus thirty r p is equal to zero. This is written a square plus b square plus c square minus a b. But here we have plus b c. Here we have plus c a. Okay. Now what's the relation between p q r in the third part? That's what the question is asking. Now what's the relation between p q and r? Okay. Don't worry, everything is written over here. You can see the previous slide. If you download the notes, you will see everything that I have written. So basically, everyone, we have three p square. Here we have q square. Here we have ten r square. So see, here we have the term of minus a b, but here we have plus b c. Here we have plus c a. Let me ask you a very simple question. the simple question being that everybody knows that a square plus b square plus c square minus ab minus bc minus ca is equal to 0 if this is equal to 0 it implies that a equal to b is equal to c everybody knows so far okay very simple but what if i give you a square plus b square plus c square minus ab plus bc plus ca is equal to 0 then what do you say then what is the relation between abc i have taught you this part now what is the relation between abc now in this part so just a little bit of observation you need to apply see everyone we can simply basically we can write this as a square plus minus b square plus c square okay because see here we have minus ab now so you can write plus b square plus minus c square okay instead of c square simply write minus c square because minus c square is also c square but now we have minus ab minus a into b okay minus b into minus c minus b into minus c minus a into minus c right is equal to 0 So now this this is the same thing, right? We have minus AB, but here we have plus BC. Here we have plus CA is equal to zero. So simply, if you replace C by minus C, we get this. So what's the relation between ABC? Now my final answer A is equal to B is equal to minus C. This is the relation between ABC. See, in this equation, in this equation, and in this equation, what's the difference? what's the difference you have simply written c with minus c that's the only difference right if you simply replace c with minus c you are going to get this equation only right if you replace c with minus c in this portion there will be no change plus c square plus c square it will be same only because the square of c or square of minus c both of them are same but here right here we have minus bc that will become plus bc here we have minus ca that will become plus ca minus ab will be minus ab only i have replaced c with minus c okay so here we get the relation that a is equal to b is equal to minus c in the same fashion 
you need to solve this one. Here we have 3p square plus q square plus 8r plus 10r square. Then we have minus 3pq. These two terms are positive. So I am going to write this 10r whole square as minus 10r whole square. Right. This thing can be written as 3p whole square plus q whole square plus 10r whole square. Instead of that, I will be writing minus 10r whole square. So again, we have the same relation a square plus b square plus c square. Then the next term will be minus ab. Minus ab means minus 3p into q. Minus bc. Minus bc means q into minus 10r. Minus ca. Minus ca means 3p into minus 10r. Okay. This is equal to 0. A square plus B square plus C square minus AB minus BC minus CAC. Are you getting the same thing? Yes, you are getting the same thing. We have minus 3PQ. Here we have plus 10QR. Here we have plus 30RP. Okay. So what's the relation now? Again, A equal to B equal to C. What is A? A is 3P. What is B? B is Q. What is C? C is minus 10R. So there's the relation between PQR in the third one in the C part. So I hope you understand this portion as well. Okay. Now. So these are the type of questions that they might ask that might be asked. So in this session today, what we have learned mostly, we have learned about quadratic equations and equations reducible to quadratic. Okay, and then some basic identities. So these are the only two portions we have studied in this session. Okay, now you can do your revision, make your own notes, uh, do your DPP. In the next class, we'll be learning about wavy curve method and how to solve inequalities. We'll be learning about that in the next session. Then in the next one, we'll be learning about logarithm. So see you guys in the next one. Till then, take care, keep studying, be consistent. If you be consistent with this badge, nobody can stop you from cracking JE. You have seen many, many examples that many students have cleared JE just by studying online. So if you are not able to study offline, if you are not able to go and if you think that, yes, we are wasting our time in going to coaching and coming back from there, so you can just study online. The only see online studying is very, very beneficial if you are consistent, if you are disciplined, if you keep yourself motivated throughout the journey, online study is very, very amazing, very beneficial, very helpful for everybody. Okay. So what you need to do on your own part, be disciplined, be consistent. Okay. Attend all the lectures, make your own notes. Do the question again and most importantly, take interest in the subject. Take interest in the subject. Take interest in the solving part of the subject. Okay, everyone. So thank you everyone for being a part of this session. See you in the next one. Till then, take care. Tada. Bye-bye. Have a great day.